One man, one bike, one dream. To be the fastest man around the world. To smash the record, Mark Beaumont must cycle 18,000 miles in just 200 days. He's crossed Europe and half of Asia. Now he has to complete the Southern Hemisphere. In this leg, Mark will struggle against the elements. It's monsoon season in Asia. This is like angry rain. It's almost painful, it was so heavy. And in the outback, he'll spend weeks riding against a constant headwind. There's nothing I can do against that wind. But his biggest battle will be with himself, as the isolation of Australia tests his mental resolve to the limit. Real struggle to keep going on the bike. I don't know what I don't know what to do. Well, I'm in Thailand. I'm in Bangkok. Um, real adventure getting here. As you know, I slept for 20 minutes on the flight, so I've had a grand total of 40 minutes sleep last night. If that's not the worst bike box you've ever seen, just incredible. And you can see they opened it last night, and it was held together by these security straps. That was it. It was pretty much open for the whole flight. So um, bits are poking through on all sides, and uh, the miracle of that's in one piece. Thankfully for Mark, his two and a half thousand pound bike has survived the flight, and he's soon back in the saddle. In the first two legs of his journey, Mark has traveled over seven and a half thousand miles through Europe and half of Asia. In leg three, he hopes to complete his journey through the Southern Hemisphere as he cycles through Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Australia, and New Zealand. It's a huge effort. The sheer physical exertion of this record attempt means that each day Mark will burn off three times the number of calories he'd normally need to consume. That's the equivalent of 24 cheeseburgers a day, so mealtime becomes rather more elaborate than back home. This afternoon has been a real struggle because over, literally on, over on my left hand side, all afternoon has been these beautiful groves of palm trees and I know that like within two or three kilometers of the road is the Pacific and the beach and every, every instinct wants to just get to the beach. Can you see the palm trees behind me are all slightly slanted that way. Um, the, the prevailing wind's obviously really, really strong in that direction which is due south. And that's, that's, that's exactly the way the road's going for the next nine days. <laughs> Happy days, as they say. The wind may be behind him, but Mark will have to battle against another of the elements. He's arrived in Asia at the start of the monsoon season and has no choice but to cycle through the torrential rain and risk losing valuable time. I don't normally mind rain, but um, this is like angry rain. <laughs> it was almost painful. It was so heavy. It just pounds and bounces. I've never, I've never ridden in rain like it. I suppose that's um, monsoon rain. After riding for three days, Mark is about 200 miles from the Malaysian border, but conditions are getting worse. Well, it's properly, properly pouring it down. This is definitely what I remember Thailand. A lot of rain. Mark's spirits remain high, but the wet weather has created another problem. My cycle computers, both of them, have packed in. I mean, it's really, really important for the verification for the Guinness World Record that I have a know of what I'm doing. But, you know, I need an exact mileage, and uh, that's lost. Next morning, Mark devises an ingenious solution. I had a good read of the cat eye manual this morning and it does say that uh, in heavy rain it can affect the sensors and to put some um, silicon grease on the contact points which I don't have but I do have silicon gel which I use for saddle sores <laughs> this is meant for your skin this is a skin treatment thing but it's the closest thing I've got so I'm going to put that on the contact points and then I've got my other side computer now on the other side and between the two of them hopefully I'll um, I'll be able to keep track of my distances from now on. 
50 kilometers to the Malaysian border. This area is the area that the British Embassy has told me not to cycle through. Despite the warning about terrorist attacks in Southeast Thailand, Mark presses on and later that day crosses safely into Malaysia. This jungle's made it incredibly muggy. And some more hills. I could see the hills coming in the distance. I was expecting them. I think it'll flatten out again by Kuala Lumpur, but the next few hundred kilometers look pretty hilly. It's quite exciting cycling. You don't know what's around every corner. There's some incredible rock formations in this jungle area just north of Kuala Lumpur. But it's not long before the monsoon rain returns. Well, that's a pretty major uh, thunder and lightning storm that I'm about to cycle into. I'll get a wee bit closer and find out how bad it is. The monsoon rain has brought down a tree which has completely blocked the road. It's absolutely busting and it's just going to the force of bringing down a tree that size. <laughs> um, it's quite refreshing because it was quite muggy earlier on, but um, I'd rather it was dry. The rain stops as Mark reaches the Malaysian capital, right on schedule. But Kuala Lumpur has its own hazards. Well, central Kuala Lumpur is another place I would definitely recommend not trying to cycle through. Uh, not quite Istanbul standards, but it's pretty chaotic. It's obviously the business district and incredible skyscrapers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get through this dangerous place as quickly as possible though. One hundred and eighty kilometers, bang on eight hours, and uh, it just flew by. I was completely in the zone today. Uh, I left this morning with a sore left Achilles tendon. Uh, yesterday, my left knee was hurting. Um, my left calf has been seized for two days, just a couple of days ago. It's all mind over matter, and it's, it's amazing what the body can do when you when you think there's nothing left and when it's hurting. Great extra strawberry milkshake tonight. Mark pushes on through Malaysia. Now, 50 miles of cycling will take him across Singapore and to the end of Asia. I've reached the ocean. I'm 8,500 miles around the world. This is the first time I've seen the ocean. There's something about reaching the sea. What a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful sight it is. Lovely little harbour here. Definitely feels like the end of a chapter. Ready for Australia now. Ahead lies Australia and the biggest single country crossing he'll undertake on this trip. 3,800 miles, that's more than a fifth of his route around the world. It's also one of the most sparsely populated areas Mark will have to cross. Flying in this morning was uh, at dawn, literally. Um, it was beautiful. After, after the, 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 the volume of people and the sort of the claustrophobic feeling of having gone through places like Pakistan and India, just seeing this massive expanse of nothing. I mean, it really is going to be a, a, a huge change. Almost 9,000 miles of cycling has been punishing on both bike and rider. So before setting out into the outback, Mark gets some welcome rest and his bike is given a full overhaul. It was a big job, almost a full day for, for two, two mechanics. I mean, in the end, they had to really change most of the moving parts. Definitely worth it. Everything feels a lot, a lot smoother. This isn't something I'm going to do twice. And to do anything like this, you know, you, you plan and you prepare as much as, as possible, but there has to be a you know, a, a part which is just sort of naive and unknown. I mean, that's absolutely essential in any adventure. That's the part which, you know, means that people after any big adventure say, you know, it was wonderful, but I wouldn't do it again. I, I don't know what it would take to make me cycle through Pakistan again, but I don't regret for a moment doing it. And I think that um, that's part of the fun. Well, definitely enjoying my new reality. These roads are amazing, a breath of fresh air. Um, I don't even mind the fact that I'm now doing the biggest hills I've seen for since Turkey. This is what it's all about. The uphills make the, the are all worth it. There's nothing in my way but these big sweeping, these big, big sweeping turns. <laughs> 